Okay, it's on. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, Barbara. All right, um, Barbara. Barbara, you are. Yeah, you're muted. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, so I put a chance to look at it um, ahead of time. So we're looking at Northeast Delta Dental Fisher Cat Stadium for graduation. Um, we have, as Paul had said, we have gone to visit there. Um, they are aware of all the Department of Education end of year um, guidelines. They've actually been in communication with the Department of Education. Um, so they are aware of our social distancing. Um, we have, you know, wearing masks, doing all of that. And they can, um, they can absolutely accommodate a group our size there. Um, the date right now, um, we're looking at sometime in July, um, pending whether or not the Fisher Cats are going to actually have a season. Um, so I'm working with my contact there, Stephanie Fournier. Um, she's the special events coordinator there. Um, so we are also looking at an early evening around 5 to 7.30ish on a Wednesday or Thursday evening um, because lighting is unavailable. So, um, so security, so the next piece under security and COVID-19 considerations, actually I heard from Stephanie today and she contacted the Manchester Police Department and they do not need to be present at this event because it's a closed event, okay, which is cool. That that would really actually is gonna save us about $500. Um, there will be bag checks. Um, each student will be allowed three or four guests, depending on what the guidelines are later on down the line. Right now, the guidelines, I believe, say two guests. Um, so we're working with that. Um, Family members um, will tickets to the Fisher Cat Stadium. They will do all of the ticketing for us so that each family will have um, a separate section. Um, family members in attendance um, are expected to, to wear masks while in the stadium and during the ceremony. Um, and there's going to actually be two separate entrances for families. They're really accommodating us to keep us six feet apart. Um, and there will be a separate entrance for the students. Um, so ticket reservations um, will be, um, we'll need to do a cutoff about a week before the event. Like I said, we're in process of figuring out when exactly that event is gonna be. Um, students will receive their caps and gowns and awards and medals and anything that they need to wear a couple of days ahead of time. We'll arrange for um, disbursement at Pembroke Academy. Um, let's see, there are at least three parking areas that are for free around Fisher Cat Stadium, which would hold about 60 spaces. And there's also a large parking garage um, owned by um, Southern New Hampshire University that they're looking into us being able to use for the ceremony. Um, let's see, logistics. So let's see. So we also thought that what we would like to do is send out a letter to let families obviously know that this is what where our graduation is going to be and how we're going to do it. And it will be a full plan of what graduation is going to look like, but also um, what the expectation is, sort of the rules and expectation of the behavior of the students as well as the family members um, so that we can have a safe, um, festive, and, and fun graduation, still um, with uh, maintaining social distancing. Um, the cost, which I thought was very reasonable, on um, the rental of Delta of Northeast Dental Dental Delta Dental, um, is three thousand dollars, and that includes the use of the infield, the warning track. Um, for the ceremony, the lower seating bowl will have access to the lower con concourse and all of the restrooms. Fisher Cat um, staffing will be on hand um, to do ticket taking, um, bag checks, just making sure that people are doing the right thing. 
Um, and we'll also be able to, or uh, renting the big video board um, and their PA rental system. So we will also, that's all for $3,000. We will also um, hire a company called MFI so that we can live stream the graduation. And that will be streamed on our website and it'll also be streamed on our Facebook page. Um, the next item was the Manchester PD, so we don't need to do that, so we can take that. And then we need to rent some chairs from Christian Party Rental, where we all already have um, some receipts on hold there because we use those a lot. So that's the nuts and bolts of the proposal. I'm sure there's plenty of questions, so please, any comments or questions, I'd be more than glad to answer any. It uh, looks like Amy unmuted herself first. Sure, thank you. Um, thank you so much Amy, for this, Barbara. I'm sorry, can yeah. I interrupt you one second? Um, I just got a message that Sandy lost audio. Oh. So um, if we could, let's maybe pause for a second because she needs to take the minutes. Um, Patty, could you maybe shoot her a text and see if you can figure out what's going on? Patty, are we obligated to stop this meeting? per the order if she cannot access it. Yes, so that's why I'd like to give her some time. I mean, I would assume she's a member of the public and I and we would have to do that. So I wanna give her a few minutes yeah, to see if she can. I, I think with a couple minutes for troubleshooting, she'll get back in. I don't think we're gonna. I think it's, if we're gonna deny her access, um, if she can't get in and someone wants to cover for her and she's okay with that, we can probably make that happen. But thank you if you'd give her a couple of minutes. I'm texting her. Question: um, I sit on quite a few boards. Um, some of our recording people take it off the video, so is it easier for her if we do? I know you did record this, right, Patty? I started recording it. Yeah, a few minutes ago. Okay. Yeah. You want to ask her, Patty, if she's okay with us continuing and she can do them off of the video? I suppose if that's okay with her, it's okay with me. Andy, I was only asking because I didn't know how far back we lost her. She pro she put something in the chat at eight eleven. So yeah, I'm not sure yeah. how much before that it was, but plus Barbara did a really excellent job of like sticking to the script, and Sandy has that handout. The one change would be no Manchester PD. It was after Patty had started the recording that Andy uh, that uh, Sandy lost um, audio. I'm not hearing back from her. She joined. I, I saw it pop up that she rejoined. So I wonder if we should talk and see if she can hear us. Sandy, do we have you? She's on my participant list, Patty. Yeah, I can see that. Also see her she, her video is working. We can see her texting Patty. Yeah, she just said she she just said she's not sure what's going on. <laughs>
I think it's okay to proceed if, um, if you want someone else to take the notes and she can look at the video as well. I mean, there's no requirement that Sandy has to be the one that takes the notes. Right. Um, also share that it was, um, it was explained at the new board chair webinar that I attended last night and I've got the RSA around here somewhere that um, the minutes don't have to be quite as thorough as Sandy usually makes them anyway. Um, so if anybody wants to volunteer to take minutes tonight, it pretty much just has to be what the topic of conversation is, um, any high points and any action taken. Um, that's especially true now that we do have the video. So if, if a member of the public were to look at the minutes and want more information, they can refer to the video. Um, I'm not good at taking notes at the same time I'm talking. Is there any of you that have that particular talent and would, would want to volunteer for a little while? Andy, this is April. I just want to state that I'm actually uncomfortable proceeding knowing that Sandy cannot, by the way, my son just, my little four-year-old just entered my space. Um, I'm uncomfortable proceeding based on the emergency order number 12 from the governor. The state, uh, it provides a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems that, with access and adjourns the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. Yay! Terrific. All right. Thank God. Did you love Sandy? Okay. So, sorry about that. Thanks for everybody for hanging out. Um, I just messed up my own video here. So, I think uh, Barbara, we still got you, and Amy, you were going to ask a yep. question. Yes, I was just first going to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I think this is such a terrific plan, and I, I've, you know, I've planned conferences, never graduation, but I know the logistics that go into it. Um, so both my things are financial. Um, I just wanted you to confirm what I think is the case that this is at no cost to the graduates and their family. That, in other words, tickets will be free. Okay, um, and then I don't need to know the answer to this. I don't think we need to discuss it, but if the total cost for this event is significantly more than what was budgeted for the event, then I think that there are business leaders in the community that would be more than happy to get their name at the Fisher Cat Stadium uh, to sponsor this event, and I would encourage you guys to look into that. But I saw you saying no, that it's not right. significantly over budget. I can tell you it's not over budget. It's actually the money that we would be using to rent the Fisher Cat Stadium is less than the money it cost to rent all of the tents, the chairs, the staging, and everything when we have a graduation at PA. So I just yes. want to tell you, <laughs> I've been doing graduation at PA now for 14 years. I know how to do it. And I, I committed to my students, my seniors, that I will do the very best I can to make their senior year, end of senior year special because they have had so many losses. So I think that this is a really special thing. Very excited about it. <laughs> um, Anne wrote in the chat that she's got a question. Um, Barbara, I just wanna say thank you very much going through my children's high school graduations, college graduations, it's one of the most important parts of their, of their growing up as a, into an amazing adult. The question I do feel a little bit uncomfortable is saving money on the Manchester PD. Um, even when there's a large amount of people, I would feel more comfortable if we had at least um, PD. Do we have PD um, attend when it's at PA? We have PD for parking at PA, but um, you know the it's the Fisher Cat State. Actually, Stephanie um, Fournier, my contact person, um, reached out to them because I wanted to know how many police officers we needed, and she she emailed me back today and she said that they do not um, feel like they need the police department feels like they do not need to be there. Does the Fisher Cat Stadium um, have um, security? They have their own security. Oh, perfect. Thank you. 
Um, the second question I have is currently in the state that we're in, we can't use public restrooms. So is that something that we have to worry about that may relax by July? I'm sure. I'm sure it will. And what they'll do is they'll set up a, a person outside the restroom to allow like one person in at a time. Oh, perfect. And then do and we there, there will be hand sanitizer. There'll be all that. All of those things will be. And um, my other con last concern here is um, the six feet apart. Does that pertain constant throughout the whole ceremony the kids have to be six feet apart they can't go and hug each other or take pictures as a group they cannot um that's one of the things that's in the um one of the uh, recommendations that's in the department of education end of year is that they want to make sure that we don't provide any way space for together so fisher cat stadium feels like with their security and with their staff and with us also helping them, um, our staff and our teachers, that we can remain um, six feet apart. So they'll set up, they'll set up the field so that our students are sitting six feet apart each way. So our rows will be set up that way. Our rows, our students will be set up between first base and second base, and between second base and third base on the sand. Now I'm and then behind home plate is where the podium will be. So students will actually walk that way, six feet apart with an adult, and who will make sure they maintain six feet apart. Like So all of these directions are going to go out to students and parents. I will be doing many of these meetings with families just to make sure that people understand you know, that we have to follow the rules here. Thank you very much. Um, I just have one last question. And um, I know Loudon, um, excuse me, Merrimack Valley High School, they're going to do the Loudon racetrack and they're going to graduate in a car. Um, so I love the way that you're doing this. Um, what about tickets for the um, school board members? If mm, so, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking that we can do that because we're also going to need tickets for faculty. So that's an excellent question. And I will get back to you on that. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate all your work. You're welcome. My pleasure. Uh, Jean, do you have anything? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I wanted to uh, make a motion to approve. Amy. Yep, Sandy, that was Amy that seconded. Is there any other? Uh, April, you've got something before we call the question? Uh, yes, just discussion. I don't know if we want to do discussion now. Yep, Is that absolutely. good? So we have the motion. Uh, Barbara, thank you for being here with tonight and thank you for the dedication to our students that you've put in for many long years. Um, there are Two things here, I know that I read the memo and one of the guidance uh, that it gave as the example is the graduation of the US Air Force Academy. Now we do know those are military officers um, and there are consequences if they don't, um, just by being in the military, if they, they violate orders. We're dealing with students. How can we be assured that our students will stay within their social distancing bubble? Is there any ramifications to us if we, if students do not, and those students become potentially at risk? You know, we can only control what's happening in the stadium. They have a separate entrance. There will be staff there. We can only control as much as we can control. And what can we take away from them? They've already lost so much. I mean, so ramifications, what, what, what? could be a ramification, you know, they, they don't get to participate in their graduation when they've lost their prom, they've lost their class trip, they've lost, they've lost their awards night, their convocation, their academic awards, they've lost all of this. So what we can do, staff and faculty at PA, is make sure that we support our students and we're there with them. The way I have it set up, there will be 15 rows of students and each in each row with each 15 students and sometimes less, there will be an adult. 
And like I said, April, you know, I'm going to be spending some time making sure that I'm doing chats with kids, making sure that I do with families. Um, Mr. Famulari is going to be sending out um, letters to families that will be published also on our webpage about what the rules and expectations are. And just like anything, you know, you know, you have to, you know, can I make people follow the rules? Well, I think that in light of the fact that people think that we're going to have a graduation that's going to take place virtually, they're going to be thrilled that we can do this. I have to tell you, I did look at at um, New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and I have a proposal for them. But we felt that graduating in a car is not as special as graduating at Fisher Cat Stadium. So that's that's just what that's what I can tell you. Thank you. My second question is. Um, under the cost for rental of the Northeast Delta Dental Stadium, it says any additional charges incurred at the event will be invoiced and paid no later than 30 days after the event. I'd like to know about what are some of the anticipated additional charges? I don't have any. Does I don't have any anticipated um, charges. So is there a reason why that's included? I mean, is there an example yeah, where they charged extra before? I think that's probably their phrasing of their contracts. You know, I'm still work. You know, I'm still working on this um, project. Um, I didn't want to spend. I've spent a ton of time already, and I just needed to make sure that I could have board approval before I went f more forward. You see what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. So what What might be a cost is what might be a cost is they might buy um, masks in case people don't bring their own masks. So they might charge us, you know, $30 for a box of masks. You know what I'm saying? Um, they might charge us for hand sanitizer, but that hasn't come up. And believe me, I'm asking, I'm, I have a, another video conference with company on Thursday morning. I can tell her that we are moving ahead. You know, we can look at all of those. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, if I could interject for a second and recognize um, Dan Morris, our curriculum director, he's mentioned in the chat that he could add something to um, the response of April's first question. Dan, can you unmute yourself? Yep. Um, April, I understand where you're coming from in terms of the social distancing. Um, one of the things that we really liked about Fisher Cat Stadium was how conducive that layout was for us to ensure that there was social distancing. It's difficult from student to student when they're all in the same area on the field, but uh, with the warning track and with the fencing that goes around the infield, uh, we can certainly prevent any, you know, any infractions in terms of social distancing between our students and other families and, and that sort of thing. So in terms of the environment, is conducive for us to do that to the extent that we can. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Welcome. Can I just uh, inject this? Yep, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to um, just put out there that on the budget line, the um, what is allotted for graduation is ten thousand dollars. Didn't know if people felt more comfortable with knowing that number. Thank you. All right, um, any other discussion? I think I need a motion to. Um, I have one other question. Sure, go ahead. April. Uh, my other go question up. was uh, we heard from Mr. Uh, Valumari about the parent Facebook group. And I'm just wondering what is the feeling of people in the group about this possible graduation solution? So I haven't, we haven't told anybody. This is a, this has been a secret approval. We haven't, we haven't told anybody that this is what we're doing. Thank you. I can't imagine, and, I can't imagine that people are going to say they don't do this. To piggyback off of that, um, and I would just, and I'm sure that you, this is already on your radar, Barbara, um, but just to say it so I feel better, uh, I would just make sure that if there's consent forms needed or whatever for the live streaming portion, I know there's a lot of legality around people's images being streamed wherever um, that we just keep cognizant of 
where we're broadcasting things and make sure we've got ourselves covered from a legal standpoint. Uh, super Thank great you. job. I appreciate everything that you've put into this. You're welcome. Um, I, don't, I don't want to belabor the discussion, but I just, I wanted to, April's question, I wanted to um, just explain that, you know, I'm in regular contact with that parent group on Facebook uh, almost daily now at this point. And one of the things that I did communicate, I'm, I'm getting questions, you know, very frequently about what the progress is on graduation. One of the things that I communicated as recently as yesterday was, um, you know, we have intentions. Uh, planning for graduation is at the forefront of our, our priorities. And one of the things that was important to me was to um, be mindful of the process in bringing this proposal to you folks first before, um, you know, making any promises that we can't follow through on. And I think the, the parent Facebook group was receptive to that feedback and appreciative of our efforts, but they are also, I will say, clamoring for information. So if we're able to move forward with this proposal, that may um, kind of keep them at bay in terms of their uh, level of anticipation and anxiety with uh, what we're gonna be doing for their seniors. So this would go a long way in kind of easing some of those anxieties, but at the same time, I wanted to be mindful that, you know, not to let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, like Barbara said, we want this to be uh, thoughtful and intentional and purposeful in planning. Thanks, Paul. Andy, you're off. Thanks, Gene. Is there a motion to accept the proposal? Yeah, we, we motioned uh, that. Gene moved and I and Andy okay, seconded. Thank you. Thank you. To, that was a long time ago. To, I just want to add one more thing concerning the social distancing. Um, it's, you know, and I, I appreciate everyone's hard work on getting this set up, but, um, you know, for all the worry about social distancing infractions on the field during the graduation process, there may be some. And, you know, as the school board, as the faculty and administration, we have to look out for that and prevent it. But after that graduation is over, all bets are off. All right, so this is one of the um, what goes on at that, that stadium, however minor it might be. These kids are graduating and they're going to do what they want to do after that graduation. So um, if anyone has concerns and may not support this, um, just be realistic that after the graduation, whether it's virtual, whether it's a drive by or whether it's at Fisher Cat, the, the, the rules that we're expected to follow aren't gonna apply to these kids. They're happy, they're graduating, they wanna be with their friends. So I just wanted to add that and to move the question. Excellent, um, so uh, there was a motion to accept the proposal, seconded, and so on a roll call vote, um, we'll go with Gene, because he's still on my screen. Yes. Uh, April. Yes. Amy. Yes, and thank you. Ann. And I'm a yes. Thank you again, Barbara, for everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just had a quick follow-up question. Um, in the future, can someone please let us know when this information can be shared publicly? So in very general, and again, Patty, correct me if I'm wrong, um, it's been said at a meeting that's being streamed it's it's technically public information now and i think that we i also heard this week that um and we'll talk about this in a little bit but draft minutes can be posted after a certain number of days and um i know sandy tries to get her minutes done as quickly as she can so at this point it's public information that is correct all right so now where'd my agenda go Oh, we have one more consent, one more consent agenda, right? Yes. Um, so the other um, planning that has been taking place, um, and I'll ask you to recognize Dan Morris. I believe he's planning to speak about this. Um, there are a lot of parents anxious to hear about PYL. It's the opportunity that the students have to come to Pembroke Academy, meet the students from other towns, um, walk around the building. It's you know can be scary, especially to our feeder towns. So a lot of time and effort has gone into figuring out what we might be able to do for those students. Um, I did share a proposed schedule. When Dan and I spoke, um, I did caution him that 
the timeline was ambitious and we need to wait and see what the guidance is. It may or may not change. Um, July 6th feels a little bit soon. Um, so we may or may not be able to stick to the to the schedule, but I think um, or stick to the dates, but I think the concept is a good one and um, I'll let Dan speak a little bit if that's okay. Dan, if you're still with us, you've got the floor. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have we always have anxious parents uh, of our incoming freshmen and PYL is a great transitional uh, program uh, for our students. We want to continue to offer that while still balancing social distancing guidelines. And then the other confound to this is that uh, parents can choose between three different sessions and they do that to work around summer plans. And so part of maintaining our, our original session dates was uh, to honor their plans and not, you know, once we start moving that around, it becomes harder for uh, families to sign up uh, and for the students to participate. So what we've decided to propose is a, an, an, a student experience that is shorter. It would be uh, four half days uh, for the students. And the reason for that is it allows us to have smaller numbers. Um, you know, when you have uh, 20 students, but they have to be six feet apart, that eats up a lot of space pretty quickly. And it also makes it a little bit more challenging from a supervisory standpoint. Uh, so the first session has 59 students signed up for it. And the only way that we can safely accommodate that is to break this up into um, an afternoon session and a morning session of uh, 20 students each. And then those 20 students are broken up into clusters of 10. Again, to just continue to uh, mitigate uh, any concerns regarding social distancing. Uh, so, you know, we would have that uh, originally parents signed up for a two week session. You know, we need to try to compromise in terms of our timeline so that we can, you know, offer PYL uh, at least the essentials of PYL and still do that while observing social distancing. Additionally, we would want to use the exterior of the building as much as possible. Uh, if the state guidelines come out and it would be appropriate for us to use the cafeteria or the gym, we would try to do that. Uh, in the event that we can and we are outside, uh, if there was inclement weather, I'd get on the horn in the morning with one call now and uh, tell uh, parents of that particular session that they, they're going to stay home today. Does anybody have any, Dan, if you don't mind um, taking some questions? Again, I'll make a motion to approve open discussion. I'll, make, I'll second that for the sake of discussion. I have a question. Sure. Is this going to add to the number of staffing that we normally budget for in order to when we need to split these classes up? Uh, it won't. Um, so the reason that we can we can shorten the student experience uh, while still maintaining social distancing. Um, Really, part of the impetus for that is so that we can continue to have the same staffing levels. Thank you. You're welcome. April, you have a question? Yes, Dan, do you do students receive any credit um, for this time that they spend in PYL and how important is that? To their they, academic. They they receive 1.25 credits. Uh, in addition to that, they're typically in a traditional uh, PYL experience. There's also a lot of uh, time and focus on the summer reading component. And um, there is an opportunity for students to earn 1.25 additional credits uh, based on summer reading. Um, <clears throat> I would maintain that we uh, continue to offer 1.25 credits. I think that we can supplement our on-campus experience with additional programming that students can access um, not during their time on campus and that would allow them to get the 1.25 credits while 
still getting the essentials of PYL. Um, I will tell you that historically, the participation rate of uh, incoming students in our Pushing Your Limits program is very high. And the reason for that is it's, it's well run and it's a really important transitional experience for the students. Andy, I have another question. This is Ann. Um, I just have a, a quick question. If something happens and we have stricter guidelines now, is there something that we can do remotely if that, God forbid, <laughs> it gets to right. I, sir? No, I understand. I, I think that we would have to essentially, you know, in working with the program coordinator, uh, we have three contingencies. We have um, we're running it as if nothing was going on. I think that's unlikely. Uh, we're running some kind of a hybrid abbreviated schedule, which is what I'm proposing tonight, or we're running something that is almost entirely remote, which I'm hoping isn't likely. Uh, I certainly would wanna try to avoid that. I think there is uh, some importance to them being on campus uh, from a tra transitional standpoint, uh, but we, we would follow the guidelines. So if those change, then we have to make accommodations to adhere to those. Thank you. You're welcome. So Dan, I guess um, talked about what you're proposing now versus something that could be mostly done remotely. Is there, I know you talked at the beginning about scheduling and, and how that can be difficult for the parents and stuff. Um, is it kind of, if this is gonna happen on July 6th and the other dates, or we're gonna do remotely, or is there still a possibility that if, if July 6th is out, we could you know, try to squeeze it at the end of the month or beginning of August, something like that? So there are three sessions and those sessions are two week chunks. So with uh, those three sessions, we're actually into August anyway. Um, you know, so if I think what we would have to do is commit to the dates and the experience would have to change based on the guidelines. And that's partly so that we can fit it into the summer, but also, you know, if we start moving things around uh, with parents and schedules, it becomes very difficult. Okay. Uh, April. Thank you, Andy. Um, so we know that our superintendent has closed our buildings. Um, would it be possible to ask our superintendent how she feels about students and staff in the building for a PYL, whether that be uh, running as normal or a hybrid model? Patty, do you want to chime in? Sure, thank you. Um, we've actually been talking as a leadership team about slowly um, allowing people back into the building, understanding that there's going to be need for teachers to pack up their rooms, there's going to be need for office um, essential employees to get in and do some work. So we have already started loosening um, that restriction very, very slowly, and we are working closely with the guidelines, as Dan said, and um, we have to follow those and we have to put all the safety procedures in place um, that have been published by the CDC. So as long as we're on the same page with the guidelines, then I'm, I'm comfortable with a program happening. Um, are there any other discussion points before we move the question? Andy, it's April. I have another question um, for Dan. Um, I'm just curious, is, is board approval being sought more to run the PYL program than to decide how it will be run? Just what kind of approval is being sought from the board tonight? Uh, well, I mean, my proposal is that we continue with the dates as they were originally designed, um, but that we are changing the model in terms of delivery. The student experience is going to be significantly shorter. Um, we think that we can modify the curriculum in order to give them their essentials. Um, but, you know, given the context and, um, you know, the nature of the proposal being that students would be on campus, I, you know, Patty and I felt like it would be important for the board to hear about that. Thank you. Um, so we have a motion to accept that's been seconded um, on a roll call vote. I'll start with Amy this time. Yes. Ann? Yes. Can I ask one more question before voting? I just have a question on if any guidance has been offered or this is just anticipation of future guidance. 
And I'm talking about guidance from the state DOE, particularly to these dates. Yeah, I'm not sure who's best to answer that question. Um, I know the guidance from the state is changing pretty much hourly. Yeah, we, we don't have any updated guidance at this point. Um, we, I think the next guidance that we'll see, barring any um, significant changes, would be suggestions on re-entry in the fall and what that might look like. There's a, a task force that the commissioner um, has formed with approximately 50 participants, um, but I don't know of any other interim guidance unless, like I said, something significant changes. Thank you, that's very helpful. My vote is a no. And I'm a yes. Did I forget anybody? I kind of lost track there. I think I got everybody. Did I get you, Ann? Didn't get yeah. me. You didn't get Jean. Did get anybody? Jean. Yes. Thank you. And I'm a yes. Thank you. Thanks uh, for your input, Dan. And with that, um, if I could, I guess, go off script just a little bit. Um, Ann, you had a question about eighth grade graduation and looking at the agenda probably now is the best time to throw that out there, I suppose. I didn't know when we were discussing, um, you know, the PA graduation. I didn't know if there was any thoughts about the eighth grade graduation or is was it just certificates being mailed home to the children? I did have a couple of residents ask me about that. Mr. Marston, are you still with us? Do you want to comment on that? I'm here. <laughs> we are. <laughs> We uh, obviously it's not anything uh, to the magnitude of what uh, the high school uh, senior goes through, but we are working on a couple of things uh, which frankly aren't public until right now, I guess. Um, we're going, we have, uh, uh, with the help of PALS, we've designed and purchased, uh, we're in the process of having the lawn signs made and we're going to deliver those to each eighth grader. We're also putting together a video uh, that will do basically a virtual awards, uh, the academic awards we do. And then we're also going to, um, I've spoken with the uh, chief of police uh, and we'll, we, he's supporting us to do a drive by the front of the school to pick up a cert, uh, the certificate um, and maybe have a quick photo op and then out they go. Uh, I'm not particularly convinced that eighth graders are gonna be able to maintain social distancing to be honest with you. Um, so I think that's probably the best way we can do it. And also uh, not unlike what other schools are doing. I just wanted to find out that the board would be notified so we could attend also. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll put, uh, we're, we're very close to wrapping that the, the uh, process up. We're just trying to figure out the, uh, the traffic pattern um, and to make sure that we're not creating a, you know, a, a major issue on the evening that we do that. Uh, but when we send that out, I will send that information out to the board members. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right, um, agenda item 4D, budget update. Um, Patty, do you want to start or do you want to go right to Amber? Um, Amber's here, we can go right to her. All right. She's still muted. I apologize, I did not hear the question. I was asking my kiddo to please quiet down. <laughs> Just, uh, we're on to four. We're on to um, four D, which is the budget update. So, if you want to give okay. us the quick hit, um, there hasn't been much change since the last time we spoke. Um, as you know, and as we spoke about, the budget is frozen. So, really, only ch any changes coming through at this point are um, any POs that we may have closed or any invoices that may have come in that we hadn't received yet. Um, but the the amounts really have not differed much from the last time we've spoken. Thank you. Um, I'll just add a, a quick note in here. I've seen some some questions um, directed to me about uh, other you know projects that have been going on that obviously cost money, um, and the you know the budget being frozen. So just for the public's sake, if I say anything wrong, Amber, jump in and correct me. But obviously, in a, in a, a budget this large and in planning things, um, there's money that is spent well ahead of time for certain projects. So. You know, some of the things that have been brought up recently are, are some of the building things that have been done out near Pembroke Street as far as new windows and new siding. Um, and, you know, a lot of those things have already been planned and paid for and 
um, just needed to be scheduled to be done because obviously you don't do windows in the middle of the winter. Um, so I would say anybody in the out there in the public that has concerns about that sort of thing, um, certainly don't be afraid to ask. That's that's not my intention is to stop you from asking, um, but just be aware that we are all trying to be as fiscally responsible as possible. We're not taking on new projects at this time, but there are still things that are you know happening. Um, and, and I assume there's some things that are happening maybe a little bit easier because the buildings are empty and, and there's <clears throat> a little more opportunity to have um, access to them. So just wanted to throw that out there. That is accurate. The other thing that we, you know, that we ask is that when they have things planned and they know when they're going to purchase them, we ask them to encumber the funds as soon as they can. So that really helps us as we're going through the monthly projections to see where we're at. So if they waited to encumber the money right before they were going to spend it, um, then we, it would really throw off projections as we're going through the through the year. So they encumber the money and then they purchase the items or schedule whatever they need to be scheduled. And then should it not come to the exact amount that they had anticipated, we reduce the PO um, and so forth. Also around this time of year, this is our getting into our year end. So there's a we. Uh, continuously review all POs that are on our aging report um, to ensure that we still need the full amount and we revise as needed and close as needed. Thanks. Um, I'll say it doesn't sound like there's a ton of updates, so I, I will encourage everybody to be mindful of the hour, um, but certainly if there are questions from board members for Amber, now is the time. I have a question. Go ahead. Not sure if it's um, directed to um, Amber or not, but the we're talking concerning the 2021 budget. Is the selectmen have not heard back from the school board yet from the April 21st meeting, and it sounded like in that meeting that it was going to be forthcoming quickly. Is, do we have any update on that, or do we need to wait to another meeting? Um, no, I guess I'm not entirely sure. What you're referencing, I know there was the the questions that came um, from the select board, and I think Patty responded to those. Um, was there? Are you? Do you mean when we could invite them back again? Is that your question? No, Patty has already sent the answers to the school board because when we were talking about it, we were going to have. Uh, I suggested not to have a whole new write up; just send a, a synopsis of the meeting. And that was already sent to the select board. We had a meeting last night and it was discussed that they hadn't received it yet. I thought we were gonna let them look at the minutes because it would all be contained in the minutes. Did I misunderstand that? Correct. I understood. Yes, yes I thought that we were gonna do a recap and send that information to the select. That's how it's written in, in the minutes too. So um, I would just, they asked me to have a question again this evening, and also they haven't heard about the uh, payment schedules yet for 2021. Patty, I you had worked with David on those. Yeah, I think that was done. Can we ask Amber if it was sent? To, um, to my knowledge, it was. I will check with Christine, but she did complete it, so. Um, I will double check to make sure that she sent them. Okay, and I can take the action um, and just just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, I will, I'm taking a note right now, I will send um, David an email and ask him to relay the information to the select board um, that we did discuss all of the questions at um, whatever the date that meeting was, I'll look it up and to encourage them to check out either the video or the minutes. I can't remember if there was a video from that time, just to make sure that they know that that information is available. Is that, is that sufficient? Yeah, and just to let them know that there's nothing, uh, synopsis coming from Patty, then just so he's not looking for the answer from back from Patty, just say that it's the answer's coming from you. Sure, and um, Amber, if it's okay, if, if this is not a misrepresentation, I'll include a note in there that um, that the budget projection is basically unchanged from the last time that we talked about it, and it was somewhere in the neighborhood just south of of five hundred thousand dollars total. Is that 
Yeah, well, last time we were at 509 and we're at 494 now. So there has been small changes. Okay, I'll, I'll take that action in and I'll have that out tomorrow. Andy, I just wanted to bring up one thing also when we're talking about budget is that the municipal board, um, New Hampshire Municipal Association is going to bring a proposal to the governor to relax the um, emergency meeting rules. So there could be a chance and there's very high chance that residents are going to call for another special meeting to change the budgets of what was voted on for the town and also the school. So I just wanted to put it out there that the budgets that we have now may change within the next month. I just thought I'd throw it out there. Thanks, I know David had mentioned that, but it's good to know that that's still um, a consideration. Andy, this is Amy. Um, I just wanted to make sure we didn't lose track of, we also discussed and agreed that we would send the backup materials as well. And that's reflected in the minutes. So the super helpful reports that Amber puts together and just sort of, you know, the backup stuff for that goes alongside with our discussion. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there any other questions for Amber before we move on? I did have uh, one more question when we're discussing the budget. Is this the point where we're going to discuss about the uh, hourly employees? Because this is the 2019-20 budget. Um, Patty, is that is that something that needs to be discussed in non-public? I guess I'm not sure where. I guess it depends on the discussion. If it's just a motion, to what we're going to do about it, it's probably fine. If it's anything more specific than that, it's probably not. Thought that the way we had left it was we had requested further information. It was also being so I not not public. So yeah, I'm trying to be very careful here. Can you go ahead. Yeah. It was discussed in non-public. So at this point. Andy, I'm devolving to you as the chair. Um, would that fall under the 91-A colon 3, um, Roman number 2, a small letter A, since it's about the dismissal, promotion, compensation, or discipline, disciplining of an employee or the investigation of any charges against him slash her? Yeah, that, I'm leaning towards that being compensation, and we have another non-public session scheduled for the end of, of the meeting. Um, I think I would definitely feel more comfortable talking about it in there. All right, um, other questions for Amber? Thanks, Amber. Most welcome. Thank you. Um, so we yes. will move on. And I do have I'm sorry, and you kind of cut out there. Okay, yeah, I lost you too. Um, I did have one more question for Amber. When we're discussing the 2021 budget and the payment schedule that we're going to be um, asking the town to send, is um, it feasible for the school board to get a, a list of information of what is being paid monthly? So we can make judgments if, if, if that's something that we can put off to another month. Um, I'm not sure. I, I would guess I would have to look at it. I mean, I think I, I need to speak with Patty about that. I'm not sure what we would give. I mean, we could give it. I mean, you do see the manifest each month. So those are the types of items that are paid. Um, I'm not sure what else we would give. I guess, can you be a little more specific? Right, it would, I was looking at not the items that are paid, but what's coming up. So if, if there's an item coming up, we can say, well, wait, can we wait three months to do this item or um, put this item off another couple of months if 
town is is now having less and less income? I would think it would make sense to re maybe review, it's up to the board, maybe review the, the fiscal year budget together. Um, you know, maybe once the school year is over before we start um, spending funds out of the next budget to kind of go through and look at what projects we had planned and see if there are things like you said that we want to put off. Yeah, because the big expense that come through is obviously payroll. Other items, certainly, like exactly like Patty just said, um, the items that are kind of a little more in our control are items that projects that we may have planned that we maybe could put off to a later time. But the majority of those submissions are covering what the payroll is. And we did put in um, the prioritized list. I think you guys asked Josh to prioritize the project list, and we had talked about the asbestos abatement being extremely important so that is something that we consider too um like amber said those tend the projects tend to be the greatest expense other than um payroll mm -hmm. okay i just wanted to just to give the board um some information is that the amounts that the town is budgeting as revenue coming in um, is falling quite short and this is only second month into the pandemic um, and they just cut our interest rate for the amount of money that we hold in the bank. So instead of getting, you know, 5,000, we're lucky we're getting 1,000. So the amount of money coming in as revenue for the town is going down. So we are sending the tax bill. There are, they are in the, uh, at the printer now. But I just wanted just to get the school board some information is that the revenue is, is going down quickly. Thanks for that. And I've, I've got something that's kind of pertinent to this and too that will fall in the next agenda item, I think. So I'll write a note to make sure that I remember to mention that. Thank you. Um, looking at Look. mute symbols. Anybody else want to ask Amber anything before we move on? This is April. I just have a clarifying question. And we're, first off, I want to say thank you for being here tonight. Um, I had in my notes that we were advised at the 5 5 meeting that the school district requests to the towns were uh, reworked by you and Christine. And you believe those have already been sent out as well? So Pembroke should have theirs? Uh, I thought that they were. I know I reviewed them. Um, okay. And so I and I sending a message to Christine, who's the one that sends that out to David to see if it was sent. Uh, I'm hoping it didn't get stuck in her drafts or something like that. Um, but I know I reviewed it, so I just I just need to be verified that it was actually sent. But if it was okay. not, I will be sure he gets it first thing tomorrow morning. Because it was my understanding it was sent. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, Amber. You're welcome. We're going to move on to agenda item 4E, um, agenda development. Um, I'm going to turn that over to Patty, but first I just wanted to add a real quick note. The thing that I just mentioned to Anne, um, this is maybe not specifically agenda development, but it's close enough. Um, I'm looking at the board meeting schedule for the remainder of this school year. We only have one scheduled meeting left on the books for sometime in June, I think it's the 9th, but I can't remember for sure. Um, but if you look at that document, there's also a line under there that says goal setting. Um, goal setting might be a little bit difficult at, to do in June because we don't really know what September is going to look like yet. So I kind of had it in my head that maybe we would want to schedule a goal setting meeting for before we start our regular meetings back up um, in September. I'm wondering if we want to um, back on that meeting and also discuss some you know, try to try to take a cursory glance at the big ticket items and projects in the budget um, for the following school year in that same meeting it might be it's a kind of an abnormal meeting anyway it doesn't necessarily follow the regular routine um, maybe we could stick that sort of um, big ticket item budget review on on the goal setting meeting um, so just something for you guys to think about, I'm not looking for any action or, or decision right now, but that's something that, that popped into my head. 
Andy, I have a question. Why is it June 9th when our typical calendar is the first and third month, uh, Tuesday of the month? I honestly can't answer that. Um, I, the, we made the schedule a while back and I would have to go back and look at my notes. It could, it could have been because something got moved from a holiday or it might have had to do when graduation was originally scheduled. I, I can't tell you for sure, Ann. I'm, um, I'm actually glad that you brought that up. And Andy, can I just speak to that? Absolutely. Um, since we're in the middle of trying to hire a significant number of teachers, I was going to make the request that we have a meeting in two weeks um, because we have, I have some more interviews to conduct and I would love to get those people on board um, sooner rather than later. What's the date of two weeks? Is that the second? Yes. Um, can I get a motion to amend the motion calendar? To have a meeting on June 2nd. I'll second. Uh, I guess for discussion, I would just, uh, are we talking about, and maybe Jean, clarify your motion. Are we talking about moving the June 9th to June 2nd, or are we talking about adding an additional meeting? Um, at this point, um, I would, my motion is to add an additional meeting for June 2nd, being that Patty is going through the process, um, and it may or may not be done by June 2nd. So that last meeting is very important because there's nothing after that until, you know, we're not seeing anything after that probably until the beginning of August. So I don't want to eliminate the June 9th, 9th uh, meeting, but to add an additional meeting for June 2nd to expedite the hiring of teachers that we need to. And I second that emotion, that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and call the vote on that. Um, I think I don't know, know that it requires a ton of discussion. Um, uh, Amy? Yes. Ann? Yes. Bro. Just want to clarify the motion is to add 6-2 um, as an additional meeting, not can't, not necessarily cancel 6-9. Correct. Thank you. I just had to check my calendar. I'm a yes. And I'm a yes as well. I'm a yes too. I just have one quick question. First. Where is the calendar for the next scheduled meetings? Uh, it's in the drive. I can't tell you exactly where, but I, will, I can make a note to send you the link or the name of the folder or something. I'm not sure. I don't think it's finalized yet. Um, there were some conflicts if we stuck to the regular meeting schedule. Kathy had highlighted some conflicts between the districts and the SAE board meetings. Um, so we need to resolve those before we can put it out. You mean for next school year, Ann? Um, no, the next school board meetings. Yeah, that, that one's there. Yeah, if you go I into think it ends drive. in June. Yeah, it, it's just, it literally it says June 9th and then um, goal setting. Yeah, so I don't know. And do you guys take July off? Yes, we typically do. Pretty much, unless there's something that needs to be addressed. Um, I was actually just making a note. Um, I'll just read it. Um, I was going to send it to Andy, but I'll I'll just go for it here. So for future board meetings, I assumed that this was a year long gig and we would meet all year long. I feel like there's a good deal in flux and we have plenty of work to do. I think we need to meet at least one time monthly in July and August, but I'd be in support of actually meeting two times in June, July and August. And I think we need to get the schedule settled, not at this meeting, but at by our next meeting. I second Amy. I just think we have a lot going on and it's constantly changing. Um, every day, basically, the governor gets on and tells us what we can and can't do. When all of a sudden, if we wait till August and then we can't get our kids back into the physical classroom within that couple of weeks, I think we might be in trouble. Okay, um, I, I understand all that. I think I would say, um, I don't think Amy made a motion so let's could we maybe say that um agenda for next next meeting i'm sorry uh we'll go with the agenda on yeah the agenda on for the next meeting for six two now which is the next meeting um we will discuss a summer calendar and you know maybe we can take it one meeting at a time maybe we can get a bunch on the books however we want to do it but we can talk about that next time around about about 
how we want to do that. I know some some of it has been scheduling in the summertime has been difficult, but if people can't go anywhere this summer, maybe it won't be so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andy. That sounds great to me. Okay, I will. I've got a circle around that to ask Kathy to add that for next time. Um, so for e agenda development, so that was actually my thing. I don't know why I thought I was going to turn it over to Patty. Um, I guess this is this is more of just a informational thing. Um, I, I, I've got some ideas about how to change our agenda and I don't have them formalized enough yet to go into a whole lot of detail tonight. Um, I did um, attend the new board chair webinar last night. It was very informative. Um, I was kind of worried with it being all online, but I learned a lot. Um, so some of the stuff, and this is just spitballing to kind of get you guys to where my head is at and things that you might see suggested um, at the next meeting or even after that, because this is certainly not urgent. Um, minutes can be part of the uh, consent agenda. I think that might make things go a little bit quicker unless there are particular questions. Um, I think it, obviously the, the, the last few meetings have run quite long. Um, I think we're doing a little bit better tonight. And one of the suggestions that was made was that the chair can kind of put um, goal times on each item, and those are not hard and fast. But if, you know, kind of like where it says public comments on the agenda, it says 15 minutes, um, that one, because it's the public is kind of a hard deadline. But if I can um, go through each item and ha and kind of say, okay, we should be spending about 10 or 15 minutes on this, um, obviously, if, if a, a good conversation develops, I'm not going to cut people off or anything like that. But I think if we have some sort of guideline and roughly how long each item might take, um, maybe it'll prevent us from getting in the weeds a little bit and, and we can be a little bit more efficient with our time. Um, some boards have hard outs. They say this is a two hour meeting um, and when two hours comes, the current discussion wraps up and, and they move on. Um, I think we still have quite a bit of business going on, especially with with new members and the virus and everything like that. I'm not sure if I want to go that route yet, but it's something for you all to consider. Um, but anyway, really what I wanted to say is sometime before we adjourn for the summer now, if we adjourn for the summer, um, I'd like to have a discussion about the agenda and ways that if you guys have any creative ideas of um, you know, how to organize it better, um, I'm certainly new to being a chair. So I'm open to any and all suggestions on how to make the meetings flow well and to make sure that everybody is getting their fair say and getting the chance to, to express their questions and their feelings um, appropriately. So really that's all that I wanted to discuss in that one. Andy, this is April. I just want to talk about the times real quick. In my experience working, and there's been a dedicated timekeeper and it's not that the chair just makes that decision at we can sit, well, when on committees that I'm on, um, you consent to the agenda and then the timekeeper tells you you have so many minutes to wrap it up. And if the board can vote to exceed that time, it's not one person, but it's the board can vote to exceed that time or not. So that's generally how it's worked when I've been kind of trying to move things along as an effective meeting. Thank you. That sounds reasonable. Andy, I have a question. Sure. Uh, agenda development. Um, what I'm concerned about is when we put the agenda, when we type up the agenda before um, all the items are, are finalized, my big concern was May 12th. Um, I never want to come to a meeting and be surprised. And by four o'clock yesterday afternoon, I did not see May 12th minutes out there. I know minutes are hard, so I'm not saying anything about that. But if we can, when we make the agenda, if we're putting minutes on there, can we be sure that when the agenda is put together, that the minutes are out there that we can we, we can verify? Um, we've had residents comment that we're not ready to approve minutes, so I don't think it's fair to us. I'm, I, if, I feel like I'm being set up for a failure if it's on here and, and I don't have a chance to to even participate in what is being asked of me. Yep, I can do that. I'll take the blame on that one. And um, typically, Sandy is so good about getting the minutes out there. I've never looked and not found them before. Sandy wasn't at our last meeting, so that fell to Patty. Um, so it was a little bit out of the ordinary. I can tell you, in, in all honesty, 
having the minutes out there by the time the next agenda is reviewed has in my short what, 14, 15 months on the board has not been a problem before. So I don't expect it to be a problem again. But um, as the person that is is charged with approving the agenda, I can certainly you know be a little more careful and go in the drive and make sure that all of those things are are there for people when I approve it. Is there a time frame that the minutes are approved before the board is expected to review them? Um, on the in the boards that I sit on, the minutes are there a week before the meeting. Um, I'm I am saying it a thousand times. Minutes are very tough to do, so I'm I'm not pressuring anybody to get them done on time, but I just looking to see if there's a timeline that they would be out there for us to review. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything hard and fast. Um, the next agenda item addresses minutes a little bit. I, I mentioned this briefly before. Another suggestion, and I guess I would be interested to hear some feedback from all of you, if you agree or not. Um, the feedback that, or a suggestion that was made last night from the school board association is that um, minutes that are, are very much transcripts, which is what ours have been historically, are tough to approve. It takes quite a keen eye to you know, remember all the details and basically the more details that you have included, the more, the better your memory has to be to say, you know, is that how, just how that was worded? Is that exactly what I meant? Um, it, it opens it up to much more discussion um, and can lead to difficult approvals. Um, the suggestion was that, first of all, the RSA only stipulates a couple of things, basically topic of conversation and in any official actions um that are taken as a result of that discussion um and they didn't advocate for that bare minimum but what they said was we used to really want detailed minutes we used to tell people they should have very detailed minutes because that's the public's window into the meeting if they were able to attend but now in this age um where our meetings are recorded in the case where our meeting is recorded um, their suggestion was for the minutes to be much closer to that end of the spectrum where, um, you know, we, on agenda item 4B, we talked about X and there was a motion and here's, you know, here's the result of the roll call vote, et cetera. Knowing that if a member of the public missed this meeting, they would go to the minutes and if they found a discussion that they were particularly interested in, they now have the opportunity to go and view a full recording of the meeting and actually listen to that discussion which is in all cases going to be more useful for that citizen than um anyway I, that resonated with me i i liked it um i certainly appreciate everything sandy puts into this and and her minutes are amazing um but i think especially you know when we are having four hour meetings um 27 pages is a lot to go through uh, and it puts a lot of pressure on us and a lot of time outside meetings that we have to sit, spend reviewing those things. And again, for me, by page 20, you know, I can't remember exactly how people worded things at, at the meeting a week or two ago anyway. Um, so, so that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I guess I'd be anxious to hear what all of you have to say to that end. Can I go, Andy? Sure. Um, I understand what you're saying. And I certainly don't think that our minutes need to be like the transcript type, you know, then Amy said she thinks that, you know, um, but the formal legal official record of this board's business is the minutes and only the minutes, not an audio recording, not a video recording, not a, you know, link on Facebook. Um, it's just the minutes. And so I, you know, just using like 27 page minutes as an example, I would be totally fine if those minutes were like somewhere between 18 and 22 pages long, you know, we, we can streamline it a little bit, but I don't think that I would be supportive of going as far as what I think you're contemplating because the minutes are our only record. Okay, thanks. Andy, this is April. I would, um, I do support what Amy is saying. I understand there's a minimum, but our minutes are a record 
of the decisions that this board has made. And it's helpful not only to the community, but certainly to new board members historically looking back. So um, I totally support that. I would not want to see us go willy nilly. Um, what it sounds like you're saying to me is we need to review our policy on the minutes. Um, I heard Ann ask about that. B-E-D-G is the policy on the minutes. It, uh, it There's no time period. It just says minutes to public meetings shall be at minimum. In, oh, I'm like, anyway, re read that policy. It talks about they just have to be provided before the meeting. And I agree, Ann, before the meeting is not enough time for us to review the minutes. So it sounds like this is a policy review issue that we may have on hand. And BEDG-R is access to minutes and public records. So those kind of go hand in hand. So policy review may be what we want to look at. Thanks. And Andy, I just wanted to type in, pipe, uh, chime in is when you were saying that it's hard for you to remember, you know, what was said here and there. Um, I believe I sit on a lot of boards and that's the reason why we have each board member review the minutes because I'm not <coughs> what Amy said, but I'm going to remember what I said. So that's why we're all taking part and are responsible for looking through the information on, on what we recall. So it's, it's a team effort. We're not looking for you to remember every word. Thanks. All right. Thanks everybody. Um, so that was really all I wanted to discuss on 4E, so we can move on to 4F minutes. Um, I think, Patty, you had some information as far as what the RSA said about that? Sure. So there was conversation at the last meeting about um, the board's willingness to post draft um, minutes. And I just wanted to get back to you all and let you know that um, some of you, I'm sure, already know this, but they're um, subject to right to know after five days. So whether or not the board wants to post them, that's your decision. We can certainly do that if you'd like us to. But I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that if a, if a member of the public requested them, we do need to provide them. So I think the conversation is really about whether or not the board wants us to proactively post them um, when they're available for the public to look at. This is April and I would like to make a motion that we publicly post our draft minutes and give members of the community an opportunity to review them before they're approved without having to take the extra step of having to request those in writing. This is Amy, I second that. Is there any discussion? Andy, I have a discussion um, if um, non-public minutes would be in this category or is that something separate? So, <laughs> Patty, help me if I don't sum this up right. Um, we actually, we had a conversation with the New Hampshire School Board Association attorney regarding how, you know, basically to see if we were, were doing the non-public minutes correctly after the discussion that we had at the last meeting. Um, and it seems there's a few ways to do it. Um, and general notes, general minutes that remove the, I guess, uh, impetus for going in. So so we could, we could include in the normal minutes something like, in non-public session, we discussed um, nominations of employees and not use any names or positions or anything like that. And if we did that, we can include those in the regular minutes. So then they would be part of those same draft minutes. Um, I think at this point, I would say it, you know, April brought up the policy. I think we need to get it on an agenda fairly soon to review minutes as a policy in general and included discussion about non-public minutes in in that agenda item so is everybody okay with going that route yes does does that mean that we're not going to vote on whether to post draft minutes tonight i think i mean that motion's still on the floor i i can't i can't cancel it um i i guess so to that point, to the immediate issue, and I'm not 100% sure um, the non-public minutes, the, the the actual information in non-public is not going to be shared. So if non-public minutes were posted as draft minutes, they would be generalized 
Um, so I'm not sure if that completely answers your question or not. Well, I, I know we have to vote to seal the, the minutes because if we don't vote to seal the minutes before the meeting is over, then that information is not getting to the residents that that was sealed. So, you know, but I don't know how long the school board holds minutes, um, even non-public after someone is hired that should be made public because that's not non-public anymore because the person's standing in front of your child in the classroom. Right, and that I, was I, actually discussed the other night uh, too, and, and it was suggested that we either um, start to put a time limit on how long things are sealed for, or that we do a, a, um, a regular review of the non-public minutes to, to uh, decide if we can unseal them or whatever. So um, again, I think we need to have a bigger discussion about all of our minutes. Let's move the question right now. It's on the table. We move the question on the table. Yep, so um, the motion is to approve posting of the draft minutes um, after five days for public consumption. Five business days, correct? Five business days? I honestly don't know yeah. if it specifies. Does anybody have the RSA in That's front of them? It's five days. Okay, because our policy, our current policy says five business days. So, okay, very well, five days. Well, the current policy says five business days. That's what it should. We can't violate the policy unless we change the policy, correct? Well, the policy says uh, has to respond within five business days of the request. So I just want to make sure that we're giving ample time how soon those minutes can be available that sometimes business can make a difference. I believe the RSA that Patty quoted says that they are they are publicly they're fall under right to know after five days. So I I don't know if we need to specify the exact number of days after they've become after the meeting that they need to be posted, I think we would just agree that they should be posted and we would encourage Kathy to have them posted as close to five days as is reasonable. That makes sense to me. So I think the, I think the current question is, are we, are we, there's a motion to approve the posting of draft minutes before they've been approved by the board. Mm -hmm. um, so Jean. I didn't hear you. No. Amy? Sorry, I didn't get that either. I don't know what's going on. We're fast muters and unmuters. Yeah. Yes. April? Yes. Ken? Didn't get it in. Sorry. Oh, I didn't even hear you call me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm a no. Um, so the motion carries. And Andy, this is Amy. Can I make a um, request? Sure. Uh, before we discuss the, our board policy on minutes, I would like um, you or Patty or whoever of us to ask the school board association for a copy of their most recent version of that policy, please. Thank you. Sorry, just it, otherwise I will forget. Okay, um, so with that out of the way, we will move to agenda item 4G facilities projects. Uh, is Josh still awake? Hope so. Um, <clears throat> so we did what you asked at the last meeting and this again go sort of goes back to Anne's question about um, projects and when the spending will occur in the next fiscal year. Um, so Josh did rank his projects in order of importance and I'm not sure, I think tonight maybe it would be great if we could get a commitment or a vote on the board um, regarding his number one rated items, especially the asbestos abatement, um, because those are more difficult to schedule and, and get contractors to come in and do that. 
you know, if you want to. Andy, I'm one one second, and um, I, I'm just, I just want to make sure that I understand correctly. Um, do we need to take action on these specifically because the budget is frozen, or if these are for next year's budget and they're things that are scheduled? Why I, I don't recall having to approve individual expenditures um, in this manner before. Patty, can you just explain the situation a little bit? Sure, there's, um, I, my understanding was that the board wanted to have the conversation about the budget next year and that the request was made um, to consider postponing spending. So there's no action required by the board, um, but if you wanted to take action and give the direction to slow the spending or to only do certain projects, um, that's at the board's prerogative. Otherwise, we would have planned to move forward with all of our projects um, over the summer. Can I ask another background question? Can you just real quickly um, summarize what trust and project mean? Sure, so the project line is money that's been budgeted for within our budget. And the trust is the um, trust funds that have already been set up and have funds in them. So when you withdraw the money from the trust, it doesn't impact your operating budget. It just lowers the amount in the trust fund. Ann, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, I My question is that the asbestos abatement and floor replacement, why isn't that coming out of trust? Because you can do physical building repairs out of trust. And you do have a line here that's saying that replacement of floors, number one under PA, that's coming out of the trust. So why doesn't the asbestos come out of trust? Patty, do you want me to answer that? I mean, yeah, it, the board has developed the budget, but if Josh has information on why we did it that way, I'm, that's fine. The, the only reason we did it that way is because through the trust, the previous history has abatement throughout our year. We're getting, we're getting into it um, as of the last couple of years. So we just, our history hasn't been to put the abatements into those trust lines. They've been to put them into the project lines or to do them in a bigger major, uh, a bigger, broader project. A motion to change them out of project into trust? I think you can. And changing the voter approved budget. Yeah, I don't believe you can. Those those are yeah, those are in the budget, the budget lines. I mean I guess we we are able to move them out of budget into trust. But if you feel more comfortable going through and getting the authorization from the trustees of the trust funds. So really, the way that I understand it, the, the fund on at the school meeting is only the dollar amount of of the budget and what we have to spend. Um, so I don't think that you know, we didn't vote on particular line items. I don't believe that it precludes us from making these types of changes, but I guess I'm not 100% certain on that. Andy? Yes, Dean. Oh, actually, Patty, you probably can answer it better than I can. So I think um, what you would want to consider, Anne's right, you can decide to take this money out of the trust fund. You have an existing trust fund, so you could complete the project. And as long as it was approved by the trustees and it fit the definition, you could decide to withdraw after a public hearing, withdraw the money from the trust fund. Um, I think the bigger issue that you may want to think about is that Josh had a pretty big capital plan with money put into those trust funds each year for pretty big projects um, and sort of a savings plan, if you will. So before you did that, you may want to look at his list because that would probably either kick something out or throw something off in terms of the dates. Right, and that's, that's my concern is- that's what um, I was going to say. 
Thanks, Jean. And I would think we should put this until we have, have all the information. This is. Yeah. I can agree with that. We don't need any action tonight anyhow. So I think that this is very good information for us to have. Um, I'm not sure what more Josh I, would feel I comfortable think, providing. I feel like we do need to take some action because we, the board, um, suggested that we might want some of these expenditures to be not made at all or delayed. And so by taking no action, I feel like that doesn't answer that question at all. Um, no, I agree. I, what I meant was, I don't think it's not necessary that we um, take action, particularly tonight. If there's more information that, that anybody would feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. um, unless Josh can tell us that some of these projects are going to start in the next couple of weeks, it would probably be okay to to revisit this topic at a later date if we have more information that we want to request of him. What what would be the more information that we're looking for? I'm not 100 percent sure about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think a bigger picture. I think what Ann was asking, and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't certainly don't want to speak for you, but what other projects are are on the docket? Maybe the C, um, CIP plan or something like that, and how spending. Uh, the, between Hill and PA, about sixty thousand dollars from the trust fund. Um, how that might affect any other projects that are projected over the next few years? Um, would in, in lieu of action, would guidance suffice at this point? Uh, you, uh, Josh has uh, prioritized what he has here, I, and I I think we can safely say that if we're looking at pro at items on here, what, whether they're level one, two, or three, if they were coming out of the trust, I think we can safely say that we can move forward with those. That money is there and, you know, allocated, if not encumbered, but allocated to do those, those jobs. But then again, look at the items he's listed as urgent and that are projects not coming out of the trust, you know, um, so stick to those urgent projects and projects coming out of the trust and then later on looking down the road at them, seeing where we are and then possibly moving forward or not moving forward on those. Is that the guidance Would that kind of guidance suffice Amy versus well, action? I just don't understand why we wouldn't make a motion. I mean, I was sort of taking notes there and your thinking is almost in line with what I was thinking. So I would make a motion to um, approve all projects level priority levels one, two, three funded by trust fund and to approve all um, projects coming from the operating budget of a priority level one and two. So if I, if I was making a motion, that's the motion I would make. And I don't- My question is, are you making a motion? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm happy to make that motion um, I feel like the sense of the crowd is that maybe those level two um, projects coming out of the operating funds that we may not have a majority of board members that agree to that. So if I needed to amend my motion accordingly, I would. But yeah, I'll make that motion. All trust projects level one, two, three, yes. Um, all operating fund projects level one and two, yes, is my motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, anybody want to jump in with discussion before we move the question? Andy, this is April. I would like to jump to a discussion as far as instead of just talking about projects, doing some quick math. I don't have a calculator right here handy on how much money we're talking about. Um, total also project timelines are, you know, What's the timeline of these projects? When are they? Are some of these already scheduled? Um, because if we take no action, does that mean by default some of these projects may be starting over summer? So my concern is we've already made a commitment to the taxpayers, at least verbally, that we're going to try to save every cent that we can. And yes, there are some things that need to be done, but if we can wait, we should do that until things are a little more certain. Okay, thanks for that. And uh, this is Ian. I have a, a question on the discussion um, with approving everything priority one, two, and three coming out of the trust. 
Um, out of A, number three is the old main entrance redesign. Where exactly is that old main rent uh, redesign? I'm sorry, I didn't. It, my, my computer keeps skipping out on me tonight. Yeah, that was a little choppy for me too. I believe he said that it's the Walker House entrance on Academy Road. So, is that the entrance where the um, SAU office is? No. no, that's the entrance that's roped off right now. I just, I'm. In my mind, I just can't see where, where the Walker House is. So is it the courtyard? And it's the horseshoe where you, where you used to pull in to drop off kids. Okay. Right on Academy Road, the little horseshoe right there. Okay. Um, so that's how we redesign the pavement and all of that. I was just concerned. I thought it was the entrance to the SAU and that part of the building was built in 1818 and I was just really worried that was gonna be disturbed. So thank you, Jane. All right, um, on a roll call vote, we are, there is a motion to approve the projects that are listed as one, two, and three that are scheduled or listed on this sheet to come out of the trust fund, as well as approving the, um, the ones labeled project to come out of the operating budget that are listed at a level one. On a roll call vote. Oh, hold on. Before we take a vote, can we get some numbers? I've grabbed two calculators and neither of them are working, even though they're both solar calculators. Andy, my motion was um, priority level one and two for money coming from the operating fund. I followed. Question is, can we wait on that second part of that motion to see if priority one and two can come out of the trust instead of the operating budget? When we have, oh, we have a motion. That's not for part of the motion. So, okay. okay. I'm just not understanding why we're not using money out of the trust and it's coming out of our budget. I know the budget's approved. But there's no reason that if we can save the money out of the budget to save money, that we should be taking it out of the trust. That's just my. Noted. Um, okay, I'm going to call the question again. April's waiting for a number. I. I don't. I'm not sure who she's. April, I don't know who you're asking for that number. I'm, you know. What's the, April, I just did quick. It looks like about 88,000. 88,000 88, and trust? Nope, 88,000. Uh, I'm, I'm not concerned about the trusts. Um, 88,000 for projects listed either as priority one or two. Thank you. Thanks, Jean. All right, on a roll call vote, Jean. Uh, yes. Amy? Yes. And? I'm voting no because right now our residents are having a hard time even buying a gallon of milk. And now I'm gonna tell them, I just approved $88,000 to be spent out of the budget. So I have to say no. April? No. And I'm a yes. Can I just um, make one comment quickly here? Uh, and as to what you you know just stated your reasoning for no, um, we've now voted on something as a board and whether we voted to support or not to support, we have made a decision. Um, you know, and, and obviously I respect your position on that, but uh, it was told to me or, um, explained to me by long serving board members that whether we disagree or agree, when we make a decision as a body, we own that decision as a body. So I just, you know, wanna, wanna put that out there. 
Um, yes, but so. residents know what we're voting on and residents know that they're having a hard time and residents do come and discuss I'm pretty sure with every single one of you that there are issues they're having. And we're just saying we froze the budget back on April 4th or 6th. I'm not sure the exact date now. And here we just say, okay, here's $88,000. I'm not saying it needs to be done or not needs to be done, but we should have gone through and, and we should have gone through and just go through. I'm sorry. Board mates. So that's Can I suggest that we get back on the agenda? Yes, Jamie. Um, that's the end of 4G. So um, there are still some people hanging out on the phone. God bless them. We are on to agenda item number five, our second public comment section. Um, I, we will, if you've got something that you want to put in the chat, go ahead and do that. And if you're on the phone, just sit tight. And when any discussion that might happen from the chat finishes, I'll have Patty unmute the folks that are on their telephones. Um, so I'll give it a minute or two to see if anybody wants to drop anything in the chat to be recognized. <sighs> I'm not seeing anything. If you want to unmute the folks on the phone, um, anybody else, if you, you still can drop something in the chat and when we're done with the phone people, I will. Circle back to that. Um, so if you're called in on your phone, your line should be unmuted now. If you've got something that you'd like to contribute, please state your name. Uh, I hope I'm not interrupting anybody that was going to chime in. This is Kevin Foss, 341 Buck Street. Go ahead, Kevin. Thank you. Um, I just want to speak to the topics that you guys were just discussing. Um, I am a member of the CIP committee. I am speaking for myself and not for the committee. Um, one of the reasons you don't want to just take all of this stuff from trust, even though it wasn't part of the plan to take it from trust, is because those trust funds are part of a much bigger plan that span a number of years. And if you start taking money from trust when it isn't intended to come from trust right now, you create a problem that mushrooms as we go through the next five or so years and what our plan was. And last year, the, the board asked Josh Coughlin to put a lot of effort into putting together a more comprehensive CIP plan, and he did. And it seems to be a slap in the face to the work he did that you would entertain throwing it out the window, A, and that some of these board members don't seem to even know that the plan exists, B. Um, and the other thought I had was if you defer projects as you would be if you didn't spend the 88000 you start compounding the problems and we have buildings that are just like village school was, very expensive and out of reach for us to catch up on. So while well, 88000 is a lot of money, deferring some of these projects it would be any wise but pound foolish. That is my thoughts for, for now. I have others, but I'll leave it at that, given that it's almost 10 o'clock. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Anybody else on the phone would like to contribute to public comment tonight? Andy? Yes, Jim. There, there is a question from Tammy Sanjan in chat as to the end date for teachers and staff. Yep. Um, I'm going to let me close the phones first. Okay. If, if I'm not hearing anything else there, Patty, um, you can go ahead and mute those. And then, Tammy, um, do you want to jump on with your microphone and, and explain that a little bit more? Um, yes, I'm sorry. Um, I was just asking. Uh, I'm sorry, one second. Um, Sandy, this is it's Tammy Sanjan. I'm good. Sorry, Sanjan. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Um, we have not heard a decision about when uh, staff and teachers last day of school would be students. We have heard the last day and um, we were just wondering when the last day for uh, teachers and staff. Thank you. 
Um, is it okay with my fellow board members? It looks like Patty's got something to say. Is it okay with you if we allow her to respond? That's a nodding head from Amy. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks. Go ahead, Patty. That decision has not yet been made. Um, we need to take a look at contract days, and then that also needs to be something that is discussed with um, NEA New Hampshire and the local representatives. So that has not been completed yet. So no, the decision has not yet been made. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. Um, is it possible to project an anticipated date that that would be made or an anticipated week? So I just want to caution, and actually I apologize because I really meant to say at the, begin <laughs> the beginning of public comment tonight um, that we, as, as a general rule, we don't respond to public comments. So I want to be careful about having too much of a conversation right now. Um, I think it's safe to ask Patty to please relay any information to the staff as soon as it is reasonably available. Hi, this is, this is April, April Villani, and I would like to reference policy number BEDH, public participation and citizens' comments at board meetings. Number six does state the opinions expressed by citizen during public comment are the opinions of the individual speaker, and that brief factual questions may be answered by the board and are its staff. So we can act. It does not require that we have to. and. Exactly. Our, our general procedure has not to engage our in general conversation, procedure but we can to speak over you. Our general procedure should be our policy and not something that we make up on a whim. So we should, well, I don't think it was made up on a whim. It's at least tradition, if nothing else. And if that needs to be formalized in a policy, we can certainly tackle that. Fair enough. Andy, Thank you. I'm sorry, Andy, one more thing. I just wanted to um, put out to the board uh, that April vacation, there were three days that we did work. So I'm not sure if you can comment on that. I'm just wondering if that's being taken into consideration as well. Again, um, without going into too much, I, Patty said that she was working with the union. I'm, I'm guessing that the union will take care of that. Um, anybody else in? The chat. I'm not seeing any, so we're going to move on. We once again have need to go into non public session. Just to clarify for the public, the reason that we split up non public session um, tonight, there was some time sensitive stuff that we wanted to get done um, at the beginning of the meeting to be to be conscientious of some people's time. Um, this is it's not typical. Um, but it was, it, we felt it necessary tonight. Um, so we currently have need to go into non public session. In accordance with New Hampshire RSA 91 A colon 3, Roman numeral 2, small letter A, which has to do with the dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigation of any charges against him or her unless the employee affected has a right to a meeting and request that meeting to be open, in which case the request shall be granted. B, um, Hiring of any person as a public employee and C matters, which if discussed in public would likely adversely affect the reputation of any person other than a member of the public body itself, unless such person requesting an open meeting. There's more to that, but basically it has to do with reputation. On a roll call vote, uh, April. Yes. And. Sorry, and I didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, Andy. My computer keeps pausing, so I didn't hear you. Sorry. Uh, I yes. Dean, yes. Amy, yes. And Emma, yes. And it's nine fifty-four. Okay. So again, I will lock the meeting and move folks individually to the lobby. And once non-public is over, everyone will be admitted back in if they stick around.
Don't forget to turn off the recording. Thank you. Recording has started and the meeting has been unlocked. I make a motion to seal the minutes from non-public. This is Amy, I'll second. We want to specify. Can we specify a time period, Jean? For two weeks or until such a time that the process has been completed. There you go. Thank you. Um, and Amy seconded, is that right? All right, um, on a roll call vote, seal the minutes for two weeks or until such a time that the hiring process is completed. Um, Jean? Yes. April? Yes. Dan? Yes. Amy? Yes. And Emma, yes. Um, agenda item seven, um, appointments and resignations. Patty? I would like to nominate um, the teachers as presented. Motion to approve. This is Amy, I'll second. Thank you. Um, on a roll call vote. Ann? Yes. Amy? Yes. April? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I'm a yes. I think we have a resignation. Yep. We have one staff resignation that needs to be approved. Anybody? This is April. I'm making a, a motion that we accept the resignation presented. Thank you. Second. Thank you. On a roll call vote. April. Yes. Amy. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ann. I have to abstain because I did not read that recognition uh, resignation. Sorry. And I'm a yes. Okay. Thank you. I think that concludes the business of the meeting. I'll make I'll yes, accept sir. the motion to adjourn. No, we added review minutes to the end of the meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can we vote and put them on as a draft? Because I've got quite a few uh, corrections to the minutes. That it's clear to Sandy to put the corrections at this point. So post them as draft. Is that what you said, Ian? Yeah, I'm making a motion that we post them as draft because I have I know I have quite a few um corrections on on two of the minutes and it's not fair to sandy to try to do that this late is there a second to post the draft minutes april was second, april was second. okay on a roll call vote april wait i have i have discussion i'm sorry guys Go ahead, that's um, okay. i'm all for this but even better than that is there some reason why this board doesn't handle these revisions outside of the meetings you know like Anne, you would email your changes to Sandy and then at the time of the meeting you know April would email her changes and me mine and then at the time of the meeting Sandy would say you know here here are the changes that I received or she would put in the drive the minutes as amended by comments from board members and that way it's just like lickety split at the meeting I was just going to suggest the same thing. Um, I think it's it's possible that it wouldn't work out if two people ask Sandy to amend the same sentence in two different ways. I would hope that would be infrequent. Um, I think that's a wonderful idea. Um, I think there is a motion to post the draft minutes, and I'm perfectly okay with that, at least so that some information gets out there. But I think it's a great idea, Amy, moving forward to, you know, instead of the meetings are long anyway, it's if people are confident in their revisions, um, hopefully it doesn't need to take up a half hour of meeting time if you have revisions and you can send them 
um, as handy, and she can compile those and make a, a revised set and have it go to Kathy, and Kathy pops it in the drive for us to, re to review before the next meeting. Hopefully we can you know, look at them, make sure we've read them ahead of time, and approve with revisions. Is that is everybody okay with that process? Um, Andy, I think for legalese, we need to have that verified. Um, only because of all the other boards I sit on, meeting discussion minutes discussions have to be made in a public meeting. But it may be different for school. So no, we would be I'm not talking about discussion over email, Ann. I'm talking about an email from only you to only Sandy that says, you know, um, Sandy, you know, I voted yes on that motion. You have me as no, or I, I had to leave the meeting early and the minutes, you know, whatever your correction is. Um, so it's not a discussion at all. It isn't, but it's, it's public information because it's a public meeting. I'm fine with, I'm fine with that idea, but I'm just saying legally, um, it's, we're not able to do that on any of the town boards that we currently sit on. Um, isn't it, it isn't uh, a non meeting and it isn't a, an accidental meeting that the public has no access to, but anything that has to do with minutes. So I would just feel comfortable if we just ran it by. Yeah, I can reach out to NHSBA. The, the lawyer there will is very responsive, very helpful. I can, I can ask him if that strategy is. Acceptable, I just don't want to get in trouble right off the bat. <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, this is April. Also, if we're going to review our minutes policy, that sounds like, you know, if we're permitted to email, as Amy has suggested, a wonderful thing that we could include in that policy on how to address, correct, you know, requested corrections to minutes. I agree. Um, so, we still have a motion to post the draft minutes, though. <laughs> yep. Been seconded by April. I think, right? Yep. Okay. So I didn't get who seconded that. April. April. Okay. Um, so on a roll call vote to post the draft minutes of any outstanding meetings uh, other than today. Um, those have a time period attached to them. Um, so the I guess I'll go right through them. The minutes of February 10th, the draft minutes of February 10, March 3, April 21, May 5, and May 12th. And on a roll call vote. Jean. Yep. April. Yes. Ann. Amy. Yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think it was April that talked me down from, from adjournment. I had that written on one of my copies of the agenda, but I skipped it. But I think that concludes business. Mm -hmm. um, so I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh before we do that, are we going to wait if we have um, corrections or amendments, suggested amendments? Um, how do we handle that between now and next meeting to move this along? I think I, I will reach out to Willa and HSBA to see if the revision process that we discussed is appropriate. I will do that tomorrow. So hopefully I'll get a response tomorrow. And then if, uh, assuming that he says that's okay, um, then we can, we can send those suggested revisions again, one at a time, not copied emails um, to Sandy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. And our next meeting is June 2nd. Correct. Yes. Did, did we finish that motion though? I'm losing my mind. You did it. Yeah. I'll, I'll second that, the motion to adjourn. Okay. Um, and on a roll call vote then, Ann. Yes. April. Yeah. Yes. Amy. Yes. Jean. Yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. You too. Thank, Thank you, you all. Have a great night. Good night, everyone.